Welcome to Highlands Church. We're so thankful that you're here with us today. Today, we're going to talk about bravery and what it means to walk away from it all. And we're going to have a great time of music. We're going to hear stories of how God is doing great things in and through our congregation to bless this entire world. And we are so looking forward to this time that we're spending with you here today in worship. Sing one, 
everybody. Welcome to Church Online. We're so glad that you've joined us here this morning. And we are excited for this day today because it's our kickoff day for church back on, not only here online, but also church in person on the grass at Highlands. And so that's going to be happening this morning at nine o'clock. If you're tuning in at 830 and you can check us out for a half hour and maybe run on down and see us in person, that would be quite fun. Otherwise, you all that are here joining us from all over United States, clicking here online, we want to say welcome and thank you so much for being here this morning. We hope each and every one of you are doing well and uh, and you're enjoying this time uh, during this COVID time, but yet during a time where we're just growing and learning together and um, getting, you know, more Jesus. Can never have enough Jesus, right? Okay, so I want to just let you know of a few things that are happening around here. And today, not only are we kicking off our in-person worship, but we're kicking off our fall groups. And so those are going to look a little different this year than normally, but they are still happening. And uh, there's some wonderful groups and great leaders happening there. And so you can find out about all those groups by clicking on our website and clicking, clicking on the connect button. And when you do that, you'll see the different groups that meet throughout the week. And um, and then you can, if you're interested, just click on that and we'll get you hooked up into one of those groups. Also, we are launching a new thing called Right Now Media. This is fantastic. We came across this over the summer. And it's a it's a resource. It's a one of my um, committee members actually said it's a a, li- a church library resource for with thousands of titles of where you can click on each and every week and get uh, some new information not only for your children, for your marriage, for men's studies, for women's studies, for it, the list goes on and on. Thousands of titles, and we have purchased this here at Highlands Church for you all. So this afternoon, you'll be getting an email from the church with a link to Right Now Media, how you can get on and click on that and go ahead and just browse through all the different titles there. You will see our favorites when you click on Highlands Church. You'll be able to click on there and you'll see what we um, as a staff recommend to you and to what our groups currently are using. And these resources, once again, are what? Free! So, (laughs) for you, so we are so happy that this is um, something that we have not been able to offer in such a large quantity before, and we're so excited to now launch this for you. And so look out for that MailChimp this afternoon, and let me know how it goes. If you don't get it, please um, send us an email at val at highlandsadventure.org, and she will make sure that you get that email. So we are, again, are so thankful that you're here today celebrating with us and worshiping with us. Let's continue on in worship. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, I thank you. I thank you that we can come before you at every moment of every hour, Lord, and there you are among us and with us. Lord, and I thank you, Jesus, that you are continuing to meet us wherever we're at, wherever we're at in this season of life, Lord God, that you meet us face to face sometimes. And so, Lord God, I pray, Lord, as we are aware here in California of our firefighters and the fires that are just happening throughout our entire state, Jesus, I pray that you would um, bring rain. Why not? That you would bring rain and extinguish those flames and that you would protect those who protect us and protect our structures, Lord God, and protect those who have um, health issues for the smoke, Lord God. I just pray a hedge of protection over our entire state, Jesus, that um, everyone would be safe, Lord. And um, I know there are so many people with many different things Besides, that's just one more thing, right? And so sometimes I feel like, okay, one more thing added to our plate here. But Lord, he said in your word, it says when that your yoke is is light, right? And and so when we lay these things at you, it's not it's not heavy for you to carry, Lord. It might feel heavy for us, but for you, it's not heavy. And so Father God, we just lay all this over and we give this over to you. And we know that you will carry us through. And so we're thankful for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Welcome back. We're so thankful that you're here with us for this new series called Brave. It's going to be a great journey where we're going to discover what it means to live out the command of Jesus to love other people as we ourselves would want and seek to be loved in our life. Now, before we jump into that, we want to look at a few things that have been happening in our area. And one of the biggest things is this smoke that has been filling the sky and has changed life for so many different people in our area. But one of the people that we want to recognize in our congregation is a guy named Dave. He's been sending in these pictures from the front lines up in Shaver Lake, where he and his team have been battling the fires. Now, interesting, this other pic, just thinking about these guys surrounded by the fires. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the the thing that he said to me is, we are not heroes. 
uh, because the real heroes are the people who laid down their lives in service for their countries. And it really struck home to me. I wrote back to him and I said, you know what? That's spoken like a true hero. I've never met a hero that is comfortable being called a hero. And it really speaks to the concept of brave that we're going to dig into because Jesus really turns our concepts of brave upside down and helps us to see bravery in a new way. In fact, one of the words that is very close to brave is called bravado. Uh, it's actually written into the word you see, can, you can see the root word is brave, but bravado is different. Bravado is where somebody seeks attention. They want to look brave. They, they, they actually are doing very bold in order to come across as brave. But we're talking about what true bravery is. Now, one of the things that is true is that life requires bravery. And it means taking risks. Whether you are somebody that, uh, that has embarked on a new project in your life, you're going to need bravery. Whether you're somebody that has discovered the loss of something in your life, whether it's wealth or maybe something harder like the loss of a loved one, every single day is, is an act of bravery to move forward and to move forward in the hope. And every one of us needs bravery in some form or another if we are going to move forward in life. And that means that we are going to have to take risks. We're going to have to move outside of those areas of of comfortability or even safety and go to those places that, that are unknown for us in our life. But here's the question for you. Do you even feel brave? Do you even feel like you're a brave person? And perhaps you can easily remember times in your life when you were brave. For example, that time when you, when you had the guts to go try out for that sports team. Or maybe another time in your life where you did something really brave. You spoke up and you shared an idea and people latched onto it and they were excited about it because it was a bold idea. But then you kind of rested on the laurels or you, you lived within the blessing that is the, that is the, uh, that is the response to or, or, or the outcome from previous bravery. Think about everything that you have in life, whether it's the freedom that you enjoy or whether it's the products that you appreciate. Every single one of those things has come into your life by some act of bravery of one person at one point or another in this world. Brave people have helped to create the future that we enjoy right now. And you are called, yes, you are called to be brave, to break grounds on new projects, to forge into the unknown. And so this is a series that is digging into what it means, especially here at Highlands, what we embrace as one of our key core values, and that is to be brave. Now, Jesus had a lot of people around us, around him, that were, that were curious uh, about how he would respond in his daily life and, and what kind of bravery he would exemplify to the people around him. And so they followed him, and partly because he asked them to follow him. And as they followed him, they discovered that he would do brave things. For example, Jesus embraced lepers. Back then, lepers were people who were who, who had skin diseases, and it was believed that leprosy was contagious. And so people who had leprosy had to stay far away from others. Jesus went up. Of course, he knew that leprosy wasn't contagious. But more than that, he went and embraced people who were lepers, and he showed the community uh, that they didn't need to be afraid, but they could actually be brave. And then, of course, Jesus helped people with mental illness. He would, he would connect with people who were outcasts in society and different ways. In fact, one time there was a, there was a centurion. Uh, now you think of centurion, it's, it, it's actually someone who embodied uh, a, kind of a, a, a terrorizing force. They were an occupying army within that region and they were not seen as the friends or the neighbors of the people who lived there. They were seen as the enemy in many ways. But a centurion came to Jesus and Jesus likewise embraced him and brought healing into his life over and over and over again. Jesus, Jesus would demonstrate bravery. Well, today we are going to jump into the middle of Jesus's ministry when he meets a person named Matthew. And we're going to read this story from the book of Matthew, which, is, which actually takes its name from that very person, Matthew. This is what happened as according to Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. It says, As Jesus continued on from there in his ministry through the towns, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a kiosk for collecting taxes. 
See, Matthew was a tax collector and he was hated by the people in his town. All the tax collectors were not, they weren't like our modern tax collectors. The tax collectors back then were more like mobsters. If you can remember the movies or maybe you've even encountered mobsters in your life, they're people who go and shake down businesses and try to get as much money out of them in order to enrich themselves and the people that they work for. And so these tax collectors would kind of size somebody up and say, how much money do you have? Oh, I'm going to take that. They would search through the house and, and make sure that you weren't holding back any money that could act, any extra money in your life that could, that could be enriching the tax collector. So Matthew was hated by his people in his town. And this is what you can take away from this verse here, that Jesus saw him. Jesus sees you. You're sitting at your kiosk. You're sitting in your place of brokenness, but Jesus sees you in your place of brokenness, just like he saw Matthew. Jesus saw him there and he he connected with him in that moment. You know, Matthew was the kind of person that probably didn't feel seen. In many ways, he felt unseen in his life. People overlooked him intentionally. They did not want to connect with him. And And Matthew would have been an outcast. He would have been pushed out from his community. And if anybody would have said who Jesus, the most honored and esteemed guest that was coming to their town, should connect with, they would never say that the person that he should connect with and spend time with is the person of Matthew. But Jesus saw him. And similarly, if you feel unseen in your life, Jesus sees you. And he sees you in your place of brokenness. This is what goes on in this story. It says, Jesus said to him, follow me. And then Matthew got up and followed Jesus. That, that's amazing to me that, that Jesus walked up to Matthew and he had an immediate moment of connection and he said two words. And at that moment, Matthew changed his entire life. Everything changed for him. You see, Jesus invites us and invites everyone to bravely be a part of his closest circle. How interesting that Jesus wasn't afraid to welcome Matthew right into his his followers into his group of disciples to actually say, you can be one with me and be a part of my family. And I love this, especially because Jesus was risking. He was risking his reputation. He was bravely risking rejection. He, he could have easily been turned down. Think about all the people who've been turned down in the world. There's the people that have, uh, ask somebody out on a date. Have you ever had the guts to ask someone out on a date? That can be a really scary experience, especially when you know they can turn you down. In those moments, you're risking rejection. Uh, There may be other things that you've applied for a job, uh, especially with a friend or somebody you know, and risked the chance that you might be rejected for something like that, or, or even trying out for a sports team. But this is bigger. Jesus was in front of the whole town. Everybody was around him. And Jesus went up to Matthew and he walked straight up to his kiosk, the place from which he was, he was using in order to take advantage of and hurt people for so many years. And Jesus walked right up to that kiosk and he risked the rejection. How many times in our lives do we, do we refuse to enter into relationships with other people or refuse to engage with the people around us because we risk, we are afraid of risking rejection? But we can find in this model an inspiration for our own life. Think of all the people that you encounter in your life and that they need to be seen and that they need someone that would bravely go and be a part and invite, invite, be invited to be a part of your inner circle and your crew. See, this is what Jesus did in the, in the life of Matthew. And similarly, we can think about how can we do that in our own life? How are ways that, what are ways that you have allowed the fear of rejection to stop you from embarking on the journey and the mission that Jesus has placed in front of you? And as a church, we need to ask ourselves, are there any ways that we feel that fear of rejection has inhibited us from engaging in bold and brave missions to invite people who have been outcast or outside of the circles of this town and outside of the circles of society? And how have we ever allowed the fear of rejection to inhibit our ability to welcome those people in to our close circle and to make sure that they are included? In fact, that's what Jesus does. He goes to Matthew and he approaches him and he says, be a part of my closest circle. 
But that's not all that happens. That's not the whole story of Matthew. It says, as Jesus sat down to eat in Matthew's house, this is a big leap. Jesus is in the town square one minute. He's asking Matthew to follow him. Matthew gets up, walks away from his career. Madness. He walks away from everything in his life. Was Matthew thinking about this? Was he contemplating leaving all these things? And he follows Jesus. And where does Jesus lead him? Jesus leads Matthew to his own house. Jesus says, follow me. And then Jesus takes him to the very dinner table that Matthew has spent many, many hours and many years communing with other broken people at. See, it says that Matthew's house, where many tax collectors, a lot of tax collectors, apparently he has a, he has a following or a crew of tax collectors and sinners join Jesus and his disciples at the table. This is a big table. <clears throat> All the disciples that are following Jesus are now sitting there breaking bread with these people who otherwise they probably have never had relationships or conversations with. Now, you can kind of trivialize this interaction, but these were people who were looked, to say that they were looked down on by the society is is an understatement. They were despised by the community. Those sinners, when they say that they were sinners, uh, they're not just talking about people who who have have sinned in the same way that all of us have, they're talking about people who have actually committed really terrible acts of, of, of violence or even wounding against people within the community and, and, and do it again and again, and they intend to do it, and they want to do it, and they take joy in doing it. These are the people that Jesus is now breaking bread with and spending time with. You see, Jesus entered Matthew's closest circle. He went right to that place of deep relationship that Matthew had had. These are the people that Matthew had had been supported by. When all the rest of the world had turned their backs on Matthew, Matthew had these guys, these gals surrounding him in his life. And Jesus says, I'm going to take you to that place of relationship that has been building in your life. And it It's another thing that we need to recognize that Matthew was bravely risking rejection. He too was now called to go in front of those people that had accepted him and those people that considered him to be a part of them. And he was being called to bring Jesus right there to the table, right there into the conversation, allow his friends to hear Jesus' voice and learn from Jesus. This is a tremendous learning opportunity for each one of us. See, as Jesus encounters us, Jesus is doing so, leading us into the relationships, the dysfunctional relationships, the relationships that we have been cultivating year after year after year. And he's calling us to, to bring him to the table, to bring him into the conversation. I just love this scene. I think Jesus loved this scene. And I think his disciples were looking around and they were kind of loving the scene too. But it says that not all the people love the scene. In Matthew 9, 11, that's our warning sign that it's Matthew 9, 11, 9, 1, 1. That's when the Pharisees saw this. They said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now notice the Pharisees don't say this to Jesus. The Pharisees have a side conversation with Jesus' disciples about Jesus' behavior, intentionally undermining and attacking what Jesus is doing. They are trying to, they are trying to make Jesus out to be the bad guy or, or to suggest that somehow Jesus is in the wrong for what he is doing. See, Jesus is showing us through his ministry, he shows us that bravery and taking risks will be attacked and undermined. They will be attacked and undermined. When you embark on that mission that Jesus has called you on, when you leave that tax booth or that kiosk or whatever it is that has confined you and defined you and caused you to be alienated in relationships all your life, when Jesus calls you out of that place and he says, follow me, and you get up from that place and you move beyond that place of confinement and brokenness, You need to know that Jesus is going to lead you to a place where you are going to experience these things, attack, and people undermining you and the ministry that God is doing in and through you. 
This is how Jesus prepares us because if it happens for Jesus, it'll happen for us. It says in Matthew 9, 12, when Jesus heard it, when he heard what was being said to the disciples, when he overheard it, when he actually understood what was being said, he spoke up and he addressed it right in front of everybody. I love that. He says, healthy people don't need a doctor. Isn't that a great saying? Can't you, I mean, we should do coffee mugs that say healthy people don't need a doctor. That would be a good one. But sick people do. He goes on and he says this, go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I didn't come to call the righteous people, but sinners. Wow. See, Jesus was recognizing that there were some people who felt really righteous. They really felt like they had it all together. And when they saw that Jesus was hanging out at the table of Matthew, they thought, you know what? I don't want to hang out with those sinners. But Jesus started to put them into their place and he wanted them to think about it. He said, you know what? You, if you feel like you have it all together and you're righteous, you need to know that I can't help you. I can't help you. If you feel like you have no sickness, then you don't need a healer. But he said, the sinners, the people who are aware of their brokenness and who are ready to have Jesus at the table with them, he said, those people I can help. And he also said this, I want mercy and not sacrifice. See, Jesus welcomed his disciples. He called them down a path. He welcomed them down the braver and riskier path of mercy. You know, it doesn't sound like mercy would be a riskier path than sacrifice. It seems like sacrifice would be the harder path. But actually, Jesus was speaking to the people who lived a life of sacrificing others instead of extending mercy to them. And what they would rather see, what the Pharisees wanted to see, was Jesus sacrificing others. Jesus calling other people out. Jesus actually decimating other people. But instead, Jesus says, no, the nobler path, the harder path is the path of mercy. It's easy to kick people out of your life and say, I don't want to have anything to do with you. It's easy to say, I'm going to cut off these relationships and I don't like what I see in those relationships. It's easy to say, you know what? I'm just going to separate myself from the things that I see that are broken in the world and create some kind of righteous bubble that I live in. Well, Jesus is letting them know there is no such thing as a righteous bubble. Everybody is a sinner and everybody has fallen. And he's already made that clear through his other teachings that there's no person who has it better than anyone else or any worse than anyone else. There is no worse sinner in the world and better sinner. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner. But Jesus is letting them know that they must go down the path that he is going down. They must go down the path where they walk forward with mercy. They engage in relationships with mercy. They engage in conversations and they walk through the world extending mercy to the people around them. See, I encourage you today to make a decision. Make a decision to be brave and to take risks. See, this is, this is a core value. This is a key characteristic of us as Highlands Church and what we seek to be moving forward into the future. You're going to hear brave take risks a lot in the future. And it is going to be one thing that we are going to learn about as we follow Jesus and we are going to discover as we dig deeper into Scripture and as we, as we literally fail our way forward and mess up and keep turning back to Scripture and the footsteps of Jesus to find our way forward. But I encourage you to recognize that, that Jesus is going to lead you forward and, and, and to make a decision not just to take risks, but to follow Jesus wherever he was going to lead you. Jesus is saying to you, he's saying it to me, follow me today. He's saying it right now. And each one of us are in a different place. We are in a place of brokenness, every single one of us. We are all sitting at a kiosk or a tax collection booth of some sort. And we are all guilty of feeling like we have it all together, like the Pharisees. Feeling like we have the corner on the truth and that we've got it all figured out. Actually, Jesus is calling us to make a decision to follow Jesus wherever he will lead us. So when we say yes to follow me, we need to be ready that Jesus is going to lead us to our own dinner tables. And to our own cultivated friendships that perhaps God has been cultivating for year after year, even through our own brokenness, so that we could be a greater witness than ever to them. 
So as a church, we know that we need to follow the footsteps of Jesus and to move forward and, and to enter in to other people's narratives and other people's stories and, and to sit at their tables and to listen and, and reside and celebrate with them and develop relationships so that they can get to know us and they can get to know Jesus and they can grow and, and celebrate like what we do. You see, at Highlands Church, we know that we are wired for community. That's how we're designed. We're designed for community. Even Matthew and all of his brokenness and all of his years of taking advantage of other people, he knew that he was designed and wired for community. But at the same time, we all yearn for deeper and more meaningful connections in our lives. You see, community isn't just about having dinner with one another. It's not just about going through life with one another. We've all had relationships where we've engaged in activities with other people, but never gone to deeper places of relationship with others. See, when Jesus sits at the table with us, he's going to call us to deeper places of relationship in our life, to deeper and more meaningful connections. See, at Highlands Church, we are going to do this. We're going to get into these places of deeper connection, and we're going to do it by following, we're going to do it by following Jesus together. We'll follow Jesus wherever he's going to lead us. See, we choose. This is what we're putting forward and what we're celebrating and embracing moving forward. We choose to be brave. We choose to be brave and we choose to take risks. And that is what we seek to be moving forward into the future. We also choose to be passionate, that we are going to be passionate about what we do and we're going to do everything out of love. And finally, we are choosing to be humble at Highlands Church, to put others first. And we are going to walk through each one of these over the coming weeks and even months as we discover more and more about how Jesus is calling us to engage our community and how Jesus is calling us to be outside of our, our, our bubbles of righteousness. See, we believe that if we connect in communities that are guided by Jesus, we will experience more of the life we were designed to live. Now, today's a special day. We're inviting you to join a community, a community group that we are starting today. And we have so many opportunities for you on any day that you need to meet. Practically, we've got groups meeting. So we want to invite you to take a brave and bold new step, to take a risk and enter into a community that you may not otherwise feel comfortable with. We want you to engage in this thing called following Jesus in the context of community and to discover the joy that Matthew discovered as Jesus began to form those relationships around the table, as Jesus began to bond those people, those men and women with one another as they broke bread and they discovered the depth of relationship that he was calling them into that in many ways they had missed out on their entire life. Our prayer is that today you would discover in some way, if it's not joining a small group community, if it's not joining a community group that we're offering, you can email us, you can text us, you can connect with us online in any, so many different ways. Call us. Let us know that you want to be brave and you want to take a risk. But I just encourage you to recognize that Jesus is calling you to follow him and he's calling you to be brave. He's calling you to be brave, to step away from it all and to take a risk. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you call us into bravery, not bravado, but bravery. We thank you that you call us into a place of humility, like the true heroes we meet every day who say, I'm not a hero. I'm not better than anyone else. I'm not, I'm not claiming that. But Lord, we, you call us into a place of oneness with our fellow human beings. And you tell us that if we're not willing to enter into that oneness, well, then, then we don't need you, God. But we do need you. We all need you. We are all fallen, we are all broken, we are all sinners, and we need you, God, to draw us into deeper relationships and more meaningful experiences of community with one another. We need you to guide us forward so that our one another is not a limited closed circle, but is that wide invitation that you demonstrated should be available for every human being. No matter where they come from or who they are or what their backstory is, we don't look at those things because you didn't, Jesus. You don't 
you don't overlook people because of their history, but you encounter them and you encounter us right now and you look us, not just in our eyes, but you look deep into our souls and you call us forward saying, follow me. And may we be obedient to that invitation and ready for the brave, risky journey of being on the path of mercy to our fellow human beings. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people everywhere said together, amen. Thanks again for joining us here at Highlands Online. Every single week, we want to make sure that those of you that are supporting us through your prayers and through your finances, that you know you don't go unnoticed, you don't go unseen. We see you, and we want to say thank you. And for those of you that want to be a part of it, man, we would love you to. So pray for us. Pray for the leadership and the elders of Highlands that God would continue to show us and that we would continue to follow. And financially, you can text the number down below and you can give to what we're doing here at Highlands to help support and impact the community here in Paso.
Thank you once again for joining us here today. And so may the peace and the protection of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you in the wilderness. May he protect you in the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at all the wonders, at all the beauty that I know he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you guys. Have a great week.